second talk this evening, uh, we have Cesar Valdez, uh, who has very kindly stepped in. Uh, we had a, a speaker pull out, very kindly stepped in with four or five days notice, maybe, Max. Uh, uh, so we're super lucky to have him here. Uh, talking about um, self deployable applications, yeah. uh, which is going to be. Very interesting. I hope so. I hope. <laughs> Don't destroy the universe. It's recursion. <laughs> right, take it away. Thanks. Well, guys, uh, thank you very much to come here and stay and to watch my talk. And I hope is you enjoy as much as I am of giving this talk. So let's start with the introduction. My name is Cesar Valdez. I am a consultant for this beautiful company where you can see this pretty voice there and everything. So Red Hat is a basically open source consulting company, as you may know. It's basically the top in the world, I believe. But yes, basically what, what, what they do is try to put op open source technology to companies. So my work inside that place is basically to deal with digital transformation. As you may see, this image maybe is very similar to the type of terrors you need to deal day by day with this trying to move from all technology to digital transformation and containers, etc, etc, etc. My focus, my main focus is the technical part. I basically deal a lot with OpenShift. So OpenShift basically is just Kubernetes with some good practices established by, by Red Hat. So are you very familiar with Kubernetes here and this? Can you a lot, no? Okay, so well, basically I will help you a little bit to understand for those that are not very familiar. So basically Kubernetes and OpenShift basically is just, just um, microservices that b basically help you to deal with a lot of machines. So basically you have a lot of machines and Kubernetes just manage those machines and it's an orchestrator. So basically you put containers there and he try to do his best to keep your container alive and if it, di if it dies, he just try to boot up the container again. If your container is not having problems, it gives you a lot of tools to make your container be there and always be available and stuff like that. So this replaces basically the old times where you need to wake up in the night, basically Friday night always. You need to get the phone because it's fire. It's on fire. There is a service that is, sh that is down, and you need to manually sh uh, turn it off again. So basically, Kubernetes, the promise is to always deal with this thing uh, automatically. So let's see how it looks to create a service. So prepare yourself, because this is going to be very funny. So basically, they have this entity called the pod. The pod is basically the minimum deployment unit in Kubernetes OpenShift. So basically the pod is a container of containers. So basically, what do you think of, of that? Containers of containers, you get it? For, for your faces, I can see that you are completely understand the concept. So this is the type of faces I see every day in my job. And then you have this another entity called the service. The service is just uh, server configuration in the edge or a load balancer configuration. You need to configure that to get an application going. Then you need a router. The router is that the server that sits outside of the firewall, go to the service, go to your pod. For your faces, again, I can see that you are overwhelmed in happiness and detail. So you have more JML and at the end of the day, this basically represents what you are faces at now. <laughs> so this is your faces at the moment. This is a good picture for those that watch in your TV at the moment. So this is basically represent what your feelings now. So basically, to put the application from the ground up to Kubernetes is a challenge. Not a challenge. There are a lot of wizards and stuff like that, but we are far a little bit from make this thing easy. So basically, this cassette represents basically the state at the moment. What I feel is to put an application from your computer. And this is means open a computer, um, write a file, a small file, a server, push it to the cloud, and get a container. 
So basically, this cassette represents the state. Now, you need to learn those four entities a little bit just to get this thing going. So, self-deploy application. Uh, let's, oh, come on. Going. So basically, I was, one day I was watching YouTube, you know, talks that get into your favorites and you don't know why. So one talk was about uh, Kelsey Hightower. Did you know this guy? Um, he's very popular. So I was watching his talk and he was talking about self-deploying application. He, he just write an app, he just publish the app, and he just run this app, and this app is running in, in a cluster in reality, not in his, in his local. So well, I see that, but the problem was that he's do this, he did this in Golang, and I am not a Golang expert. And also, Golang sounds too much to Google, and Google too, right now is like an empire. So I say, come on, I need to be, I am a rebel. Come on, I need to build this. I need to copy this. So like, I need to copy this thing. And, and then I choose to choose the most loved language in the world. No GS, of course. Everybody loves this language. Everybody's happy with that. But to be honest, come on, it's a high level language. I come from the C++ Java world, and for me, JavaScript is a holiday. I, I don't need to care about pointers or anything like that. I don't have a stack traces or something killed, uh, you know? So I don't need to use GDB or anything like that. So come on, you are blessed, man. So you should be happy now. So OK, basically, to, to do this challenge, I need to basically, what I want to do is to replace the Doge's runtime with the cloud runtime. From the point of view, my, the challenge is, from the point of view of a person that doesn't know anything about JavaScript, he don't need to know if he's running in local or he's running in the cloud. Because that's, that would be a good test to know if this thing is really useful. Otherwise, uh, come on. So you get the idea. I try to make an API that teach your, your script to deploy itself in the cloud. To just to make it easier, to change the cassette for 2009, come on, 2019, sorry. So I wanted to just move forward a little bit with the stuff, and it was a challenge. I just wanted to, to see if I am able to do it. So we have these layers here. Let's see how we can accomplish this. The first layer is Node.js, JavaScript interpreter. We are fine. Second layer is the one that communicates your high-level language the beautiful high-level language with the, with hell. So right here, this is like Egyptian pharaoh that slash every day the slaves, and you are dealing with B8 that basically move a lot of work from the beautiful place here to the bad place here. So what do we need to do? So I was in bed, sleepless, <laughs> looking how to do this. So. And then I remember virus in the 80s. Every, nobody, everybody, um, somebody here are familiar with those beautiful programs that infect your computer? Like everybody, or everybody burned after 2000 here or something like that? So I remember with melancholy, those days where you open a file and you don't know if there is an entity there doing some crazy stuff. And for me, those days were like, I was, romantic in those days. I wanted to do something like that. So this is my opportunity. So I build, I create this API call, uh, sorry. I create this API called OKD Runner. What I call is a, um, I forgot the word for Benign. It's a Benign virus. You install it yourself and it changes your interpreter and make it um, run application in the cloud. So basically what I did is, you have your script, you install the library, and now you have your program will run in the cloud or in your local. It doesn't care. And you will be happier because, come on, you don't need to deal with that. You can pass this program to somebody with no knowledge in, OKD, in OpenShift or Kubernetes, and he will be able to run this and deploy it in the cloud. So that's the promise, basically. So let's write a quick hello world. So, can you see here the console? You can see it? 
fine. OK. So basically, we're going to start with a folder. We call it hello. First of all, and let me close this. Um, first of all, I, going I have this cloud, for example. So basically, this is an OpenShift instance, it's a Kubernetes OpenShift instance. So this is a, a, it can be in your machine, you can set up yourself. It's, it's, it's like, or you can get an Amazon one. So basically, you need an installation place. Let's say that w you and me share this place. And right now, the only way that you can put an application here is if I teach you how to do it, doing a lot of like browser catalog and stuff like that. So let's say that we are just two teammates and I want to show you how to deploy applications. So you go to here, let's create together a beautiful app. Uh, let's first initialize this for those that doesn't, are not familiar with JavaScript, this is just um, it's a configuration file and just like to initiate a project there. So the, the second thing that you need to do is create the index.js. Everybody is familiar with this. It's just the entry point for your project. Nothing, that's, this is very similar to J what Java have a main. This is the index here. Cool. So let's do what every senior developer do. I is looking at Stack Overflow. A hello world <laughs> of Express because I don't remember. So you see here we have a beautiful hello world ready for copy. <laughs> uh, we paste it here and we change the port because convention over configuration. And that's it. So right now, like, come on. <laughs> Can you cut this, please? Can you cut? <laughs> can you cut <could> this? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we have our our beautiful project. Ah, nothing impressive. Like Java, Java will take a little bit more. But hey, I think. Every, that's, that's first world problems in reality. So we have our stuff. Now I will, let's, um, this, I think this thing is ready for production now. So what I'm going to do is just call the library here. Require. I just add the library, there is no trick. We can discuss if you want to know the trick, but hey, just try to, to discover the trick. It's a challenge. Um, so we get the library as we did with the other thing. You see, easy, now I, Tell you again the index, everything is fine, it's working. Now I can tell you like, hey, can you try and do this thing here and do this here? This is basically, hey, let's deploy this app with 80 with a container using 80 megabytes of RAM. And that's it. And then boom, it's it's taking control of your program, like a beautiful 80s virus. Isn't not that amazing? Nobody knows that virus will have this evolution of greatness in the future. I'm, I'm a visionary. You can cut that as well, please. <laughs> so we have the, basically, Kubernetes have this concept of having a server, a RESTful server, in the pr here's the interface, and then there is a robot that executes what the Basically, the interface told them to do. So we need the, to get the interface. You need to get this thing. This is the user. I just send this to my to some account. So <laughs> no. So you get this, and you see namespaces. Basically, is the way you partition a cluster. So you put names. You can say like, I want three nodes here in this name. 
three. So that's basically what I mean. So we are going to use testing. So at the moment, right now, your app is being deployed. Tell me, how much of you can do this now? Everybody is an expert now in Kubernetes. <laughs> let's change the CV now. Let's, sh let's change the resume. We are ready. So basically, right now, like if, if I send you this by email, you can do it. So it's right now you have an app deploying in the uh, and as well it's very intelligent. Like the virus didn't found some deployment requirements and he just added for you. So just uh so right now it's building. What what is doing? Nobody cares. I don't care. It's making a container, but you don't care. And that's the magic, my friends. So right now, you can just get that URL here. That's it. Your app is running in the cloud. Everybody, now just go to your CV and change it. You're an expert in Kubernetes. <laughs> you are ready to go. So right now, just to, just to show you a little bit how it, how it feels to work a little bit with this, is like, imagine you want to do a change. So you want to do something like this. Uh, So let's write here like um, date dot now, just to see like if we can receive some um, what is the name some timestamps, just to to give the give us some something cool to to do like. So this is how it will look like. So I will have console here as well. And I have a T. So I, I imagine I you just ask you to do this and you say, okay, I added the stuff. Cesar, I think it's working. It's ready for production. And you, I say, okay, now deploy it. And you just deploy it again. Now there is no password, no user, no nothing. It's automatically the virus is working in your favor. <laughs> it's time to change the conception of the virus. Virus is good. It's a good, um, <laughs> so right now it's the same story. It's just redeploying, making a container. If you have Kubernetes in the future, will be K-native. They, they call it like that to this process at the moment. It's just making an image, a node image, a container, and then it packages and it works like a pure function. From now on, that, fun that, that container, every, every time it's deployed, you get the same answer. And you can play with this fact now. And you can develop your, you know, like Java guys use this jar. It's reality. It's, it's true. So now in the future, you need to use a container in the node side. And it will do the same work that the jar does. Like you care a lot that the jar never get, it get deployed the same way in both sides. So the container the same. It's a, just a pure function. The only problem is that now you have the overhead. The Java guys had the overhead of jar container. And Node guys, come on, the most lovely programming language in the world. Now just need to do this. Um, so basically we go here and you see the logs here. Like from the point of view of somebody that is not an expert, this thing could work in local and he don't know. And that's the objective. So, so what, that's what I wanted to achieve for this first version. Of course, it's under development, so it could fail a little bit, so don't be mad. And so, but open a pool, um, I don't remember, issue. In, in. So now that, we did, now that we did this big jump in time, and we are ready now to, maybe we can perceive container, because if you remember this container that we push there, is basically, we can think about it like an object. Like this object is a domain called hello, and if you ask him a question, it gives you hello back and a timestamp. So this is very similar to object orientation. Are you agree with that? Like if you, if we do an interpretation of Alan, well, I, don't, I don't remember, Alan, this guy of Apple, I don't remember his name. He said like objects is basically entity and they pass messages between each other. So Alan K say that. So basically we can treat this thing, this container as an object now. 
we can say like, hey, if we treat that as an object, like maybe we can apply the sign pattern to that thing. I, I don't know if I pronounce it well, but the sign patterns of Java, no? Like we can apply the sign patterns. It would be cool. Can you believe if, if you can apply the decorator pattern, let's say. Like decorator, what is the decorator pattern for those Node.js developers in the audience? So it's basically when an object, ob ob in object-oriented programming language, the decorator pattern is that allowed to add behavior at runtime, basically, that means. So do you think now with this technology, we should be able to do that now? Like we should be able to treat the containers an object and ad add behavior. So let's see if we can do something like this. Now we want to create a custom 404, as we Roger mentioned, we're going to create two independent that don't know anything about each other's containers, and we're going to make them work in a way that, hey, that they, they add together some functionalities to each other. So for that particular thing, I didn't take the risk, and I just write the code right there, because, come on, I was having problem copying and pasting this express thing, <laughs> like to risk it now, everything in this one. So basically what we are doing here is, there is a pod, basically we don't care what a pod is, but it, it's an entity. Right now, it's, let's just put something graphical so you have a better picture. So we have a pod, this thing, this is the pod, you see this is an entity, and we, what we want to do is, right now this pod is like a jail, inside this jail is the container, hello, running there. What we're going to do is, we're going to add another container, in this jail, and we're going to make them work together. So basically, if you see this, our deployment here, if you go to 404 here, right now, our service doesn't know how to deal with 404s. So if, if, if this was an object and you follow the open-close principle, you won't add a 404 here. You will create an object that adds this behavior because Maybe you need to reuse this behavior later with other objects, correct? Please, Java guys, help me with this. I need your cool. Okay, so now we're going to do this with containers because we want to, we want to use reusability. We want to extend this behavior, but we want, to, want, we want to keep the hello container as it is. We don't want to touch it because it's illegal. You remember open close principle, nobody wants to touch something of other people. If it's done by other guy, you own it if you touch it. That's the rule. So let's add an enterprise grade 404 page. So we have this web page. Basically, I'm going to save you the details, but basically it's like we're going to intercept the messages. If the message is 404, we're going to override that message with an enterprise grade 404 web page. Um, and that's how it works. If you want more details, I'm going to send you the link later. I just wanted to, 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 that you go home with this inspiration. Uh, if you're a Java developer, try to make something similar in that side of the, of the equation. So basically what we're going to do now is to use, I create this one, this one is attached. Uh, I hope it works. You see, it's, the virus is intelligent now. It said, hey, you had two deployments. I choose the number one. And it right now it's under development, so you're going to see a lot of traces there that are, but right now it's making another container using Knative. The future of Knative is using another container. And now these two containers will put together and will do this thing here, the representation here. Like we're going to have our custom 404 taking care of the other container and then adding them that behavior. And I will explain later what you can do with that, how powerful it is. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, I hope, yes. Um, right now, you go here. I hope it works, it's still working. And let's see now, if you fail, you get an enterprise grade 404 ready to deploy, ready for production. So this is, this, you say, yeah, Caesar, but this, come on, this is beautiful experimentally, and I love what you try to do and stuff like that, but I am an enterprise man, I need money. 
I, I deal with money, with, with stuff, with real stuff. So, okay. So I'm going to give you another example. Uh, and just before going there, I want to show you a little bit what happened. You see right now, you have the hello, you have the other guy. And what it does is just, it keep the port like it is. And I overwrite the port here, doing some trick. And basically, I can intercept what he, what he sees and improve it. The two containers don't know anything about each other. So they are following the open close principles. And now I'm going to show you what you can do with this information now. Because right now, just a 404 is not enough. So basically, I wrote this small program. I didn't have time to get, get it ready. But basically, what it does is it, he injects the same con uh, one container, basically, getting metrics of other containers running side by side. This is the, they call it the ambassador pattern. So basically, one container is doing the job. He, doesn't, he believes he's alone. The other container is grabbing metrics in real time. The CPU, the wha what time is getting each call and everything. And basically, that's how it works here. So this is one idea that you can take home, that you can say, hey, I believe like I have this COBOL or black box uh, type of service that I don't want to see the code. And I can put this another container and I can do stuff like improve the 404. I can read the metrics and can do a lot of crazy stuff. And that's it. So basically, if you you can do a lot of stuff with this thing, you can do like authentic taking care of authentication with one container, and the other container is completely clueless of how to make authentication. That's another idea. And if you make some money, just please call me and maybe <laughs> that's it. So thank you very much.